Okay, so let's start with a short recap of uh, game theory. Uh, so as we have uh, said, uh, so uh, a game is a, it's a model of uh, strategic interaction between uh, individuals and it is formalized uh, by a set of strategies uh, for each of the players and uh, by payoff uh, functions. And uh, the main result is uh, um, Nash theorem in 1950. It says that uh, every finite normal form game admits uh, at least uh, one uh, Nash equilibrium in mixed uh, strategies. Okay, so um, Okay, so um, so uh, so for example, you can uh, consider the battle of the sexes and uh, find out what are the uh, Nash equilibria. As we said, uh, one has to look at uh, what is the best response uh, of each player uh, to the strategies of the opponent, and by finding a fixed point. Uh, of the best response correspondences, one finds a uh, uh, Nash equilibrium. Okay, so uh, there is another way in which we can uh, think about finding uh, find uh, um, um, Nash equilibrium, which is uh, what is called uh, backward induction. So let me uh, explain backward induction uh, for this uh, very simple case. So this is uh, uh, a game where uh, player one uh, first have to choose uh, L or uh, R. And then uh, player two, if uh, player one choose uh, L, uh, the game finishes and this is the payoff. If player two, uh, player one plays R, then player two is player two turn. You can choose X or Y. And uh, if he chooses Y, then uh, it's again the turn of player one. And uh, player one uh, can choose A or B. And these are the terminal nodes, okay? So in backward induction, you proceed from the end of the game and you move upward, okay? So you, you start from the end of the node and then uh, you ask yourself, uh, what is the uh, best uh, uh, action of player one at this node. And then uh, here it would get three, here it would get zero. So the best uh, action here would be A. And then uh, you can go up and now you can consider uh, what player two uh, has to choose. So uh, if he chooses X, uh, he will get uh, one. If he chooses uh, uh, Y, he can anticipate uh, that uh, one uh, will choose A, and so he will get zero. So the best action for player two is to choose uh, X. And then uh, uh, you can go uh, uh, one step up. And uh, now player one knows that uh, player two will choose X. So he has to choose between uh, payoff and this payoff and since two is larger than one he will choose this payoff so this uh, uh, L will be his uh, best action okay so you see that indeed uh, this is uh, the Nash equilibrium of this game and you can also find this out by writing uh, this uh, um, game in a normal form in normal form, uh, you should write a table where uh, uh, the, um, you have the payoff of uh, the two players, depending on the possible strategies of uh, the, the two players. Okay, so in this case, uh, player one has two choices, uh, uh, this one and this one, so he has four possible strategies. And when you write uh, this uh, uh, game in this form and you uh, see what are the best response uh, of each player uh, to the strategy of the opponent, then you find that the fixed point of the uh, uh, best response is either this one 
or uh, uh, this one. So it's essentially, it coincides with this Nash equilibrium. Okay, so uh, now, uh, if you think a little bit more about uh, this construction, uh, however, uh, there is uh, um, some subtlety, okay? So for example, uh, should uh, uh, player two, imagine that player two is at this point, and, uh, and then uh, at this point, he has to choose between X and Y. Should he still uh, uh, believe that uh, player one is rational? Because if he were rational, he would not uh, get you. Uh, he would not find himself at this point. Okay, because uh, player one should have chosen uh, L. Okay, so then uh, uh, if he does not think uh, that player two one is rational then uh, he may think uh, that uh, when uh, he will choose uh, uh, at this point, uh, he may choose B instead of A. Okay, and, uh, uh, and so you see uh, uh, this uh, doubt on the rationality of uh, uh, player one uh, is um, uh, it's really uh, an interesting feature. And, and actually it could be exploited also by player one because you, you, you could say that if player one actually chooses R instead uh, of uh, L, uh, he would instill this doubt uh, on uh, his uh, rationality. And uh, uh, with the idea that uh, maybe uh, player two will choose Y instead of X. Uh, so he, he could get a three instead of two. Okay, so the, the, uh, again, there are a lot of uh, uh, this uh, type of uh, complications. And uh, I, I'm not going into uh, too much uh, uh, detail, but just want to give you an idea of the type of uh, 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 complication that may arise. Now, um, there is another uh, um, uh, situation uh, that uh, uh, another comment I want to make, uh, uh, which is uh, about what is called the uh, uh, sub game perfection. So let's uh, analyze this game. So this is a game where uh, a player one uh, first moves, so then uh, uh, if he chooses R, then he has to move again. And then uh, uh, player two has to move, but player two does not know what player one is choosing between A and B, okay? So, and then uh, you can solve this problem, this game by backward induction and find out uh, that uh, there is a unique uh, Nash equilibrium, which is uh, uh, three and four is this one, no? Because this is the best response of player two, both in this case and in this case. And uh, then uh, the best response uh, um, of uh, player one, in this case, is B, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, now you can represent this uh, uh, as a um, normal form game. And uh, if you do that, uh, then uh, you end up uh, with this uh, uh, table here, okay? Now, if you look at this table, again, uh, you see that uh, three and four is a Nash equilibrium because uh, this is uh, the best response. Uh, y is the best response uh, uh, of two to strategy RB, and RB is the best response of player one to strategy Y. Uh, but if you look at what are the other best response, then uh, you find out that uh, there is another Nash equilibrium, which is essentially uh, uh, two six and two six. So it corresponds to this point here, which is not uh, a Nash equilibrium that, uh, according to backward induction. But when you write uh, uh, this game in terms of a normal form game, then uh, uh, what you realize is that uh, uh, there is actually uh, this uh, Nash equilibrium. 
Now, this Nash equilibrium has a, a different uh, uh, um, uh, so it's a different uh, nature than uh, than this one, and uh, it is a different nature because uh, 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 in game theory jargon is not sub game uh, perfect because say a, a game a Nash equilibrium is sub game perfect if it is uh, uh, consistent uh, with every sub game. Okay, so if you consider here only the subgame that uh, 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 stems from this side here, then you see that uh, essentially uh, the only uh, Nash equilibrium that is uh, the same in all subgames is essentially three, four. Now, uh, however, you see that uh, this Nash equilibrium is uh, uh, more convenient uh, for uh, uh, player two, no? because it would get six uh, instead of four. So the question is, uh, um, maybe uh, player two should, pay, uh, should say to player one, uh, look, I'm going to play uh, X no matter what. Okay, no matter what you do, I'm going to play X. And then uh, if uh, player one uh, trusts uh, uh, what player two is saying, then uh, uh, what he should do is essentially uh, to play uh, LA or LB or to play L, okay? And then they will get into this uh, uh, Nash equilibrium. Okay, so the question is now, uh, do you think that uh, uh, player one should trust uh, player two or uh, uh, not. Okay, so I hope the question is clear. And now essentially what we can do is uh, to go to this uh, um, uh, slide on as yesterday, and uh, you can uh, uh, add your uh, um, um, your uh, your answer, okay. Okay, so we have one answer up to now. Two answers, three. Okay. Very good. Uh, 15 answers. Okay, so um, essentially, um, now we have almost 30 answers. So let's wait uh, a little bit more. Okay, so we have a uh, 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 31 answers and uh, your um, um, what comes out of these answers is that essentially half of you think uh, that uh, player one should trust uh, player two, half of you uh, think that uh, he should not trust. However, uh, say when uh, uh, if uh, uh, player one uh, actually uh, trust uh, uh, players uh, to does not trust player to threat then uh, um, essentially he will play uh, left and uh, so sorry he will play right and uh, when uh, uh, at, when they are at this point when they are at this point they are uh, playing this game here and this game has uh, only one Nash equilibrium. So it is not credible that uh, in this game, uh, player uh, two will play X, okay? So this is not a credible threat by uh, player two. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for... Uh, uh... 
Okay, so uh, what I want to, uh, so this idea of uh, credible facts is, um, uh, is an important issue when you think about games that are repeated in time, okay? Now, uh, Say when you have a game that is repeated in time, imagine that uh, uh, you have players that uh, uh, play uh, several times the same game, then the situation becomes uh, uh, a little bit uh, more complicated, okay? Because now really strategy become uh, plans of action. So a strategy, is a, a specification of what uh, each uh, uh, player, uh, how the player will behave at any time, depending on uh, how he played before and how his opponent uh, played before, okay? So the space of strategy becomes really huge, okay? It becomes... Uh, um, uh, uh, very, uh, very large. And also, well, the payoffs, uh, now at, at each uh, stage of the game, you have uh, uh, some uh, payoff, uh, which are uh, given to agents. And so the, the, uh, the, the, the total payoff, uh, or the, the, the payoff that agent consider to maximize, is essentially the sum of these payoffs. Now, um, usually one, uh, uh, also introduces uh, uh, what is called the discount factor, this uh, delta here. Delta is uh, uh, less or equal to one. With the idea that uh, um, present uh, um, payoffs are uh, uh, worth more than future payoffs, okay? And uh, why is this so? Well, uh, one idea is that, uh, yes, if you have uh, $1 uh, uh, today, then you can put it in uh, the bank uh, and uh, it will become, uh, uh, say, more than $1 tomorrow, okay? Because of the interest rate. So that $1 tomorrow is worth uh, uh, less dollars today, okay? The other way to interpret a discount factor is like a probability, okay? So you can think that delta is the probability that uh, the game will be played uh, next time, okay? And uh, if, the play, if, if the game is, uh, uh, so that every time the game is repeated with a certain probability delta. And so that uh, there is a probability uh, that the game will end and then all the payoff uh, will be zero from that point on, okay? Okay, so uh, let's uh, uh, see what happens uh, if we consider uh, a repeated uh, uh, prisoner's dilemma, okay? So here is the table of the prisoner's dilemma. And uh, as you can see uh, here, the strategy L uh, dominates strategy R because essentially uh, whatever uh, um, uh, player two plays, strategy L always gives uh, a higher uh, payoff to uh, player one, okay? Now imagine that this game, uh, this is the prisoner's dilemma is played uh, uh, one time, then it's played a second time, then uh, et cetera, et cetera, it's played uh, three times, okay? Um, so there is a small window block in the upper right uh, corner of the screen. Uh, so that is the mess. Uh, uh, is it okay now? Uh, no, we can still see the so no I think uh, so because otherwise I don't see your questions. Okay, so now is it okay? 
Did I lose it okay now? Uh, no, we still see the... Ah, uh, you still see the... Um, uh, what is this? Oh, let me see. Uh, ah, this one. Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Yes. No, Professor, there is a still no, a window. Still. A window in the right, uh, down right. Uh, oh, that is really strange. Uh, the window ah. title is build order. It is written no build effect. Wait a moment. Um, okay, so. So let me uh, see. Um, okay. So uh, let me try to share again, and I hope it will not work fine. Um, Is it okay now? Ah, uh, we move on. Is it okay gone now? now? It's gone. Now it's gone. I, okay, yes, good. now it's okay. Very good. Okay. So let's go back to our uh, repeated prisoner's dilemma. Now, uh, this situation, you can analyze it uh, with uh, backward induction. So imagine that you are at the last stage of this game, then you know that uh, the game will end after this time. And then, uh, uh, well, uh, the only uh, possibility is to play the Nash equilibrium, which is essentially to play R, L and L, okay? But then if this is true for the last game, then you go to the previous game uh, and uh, you, in the previous game, you know that in the next game, uh, you will play LL. So you should play LL also in the previous game. And you can uh, go on like this uh, and figure out that essentially the uh, Nash equilibrium in this uh, uh, finitely uh, repeated game must be uh, always uh, defect and defect, okay? So there is no, nothing uh, really new, okay? Now, uh, the things changes, may change, if you change a little bit uh, the game. So now this is a game where I have had added a new strategy, U, okay? And this strategy, U, is such that now there are two Nash equilibria. So this is LL and U, U, okay? And uh, let's imagine that this game is placed twice. It's, placed at, uh, it's played at time t equal one and at time t equal two, okay? So if we have to play this game, then, uh, uh, well, we can, uh, there are of course two Nash equilibria. We can uh, essentially agree to play this Nash equilibria U, uh, U, and then uh, we can get uh, essentially a payoff of six. Imagine in this case, delta is equal to one, a payoff of six, okay? Very good. However, we can also do better, okay? Imagine the following strategy that are called strategy C, C. And uh, the strategy C is that, uh, uh, um, player playing this strategy will play R at uh, the first uh, stage. And then uh, if uh, the, other person, the other player also plays R, then he will play U at the second stage, okay? But if the other uh, player does not play R, then uh, um, uh, he will play L, okay? So this uh, strategy contains like uh, a, a threat, okay? So essentially I'm telling you, look, I'm going to play R, 
And, uh, and if you play R, I will play U the second uh, uh, step. But if you don't, I will play L, okay? And uh, it is a threat uh, which uh, uh, I mean, threatens to punish. Uh, so it suggests uh, what the other player should do, which is play R. And uh, if the other player does not uh, play R, there is a punishment because instead of you, uh, the, uh, I will play L, okay? So now, if you think uh, that uh, uh, if you are playing against uh, this strategy, you already know what will happen at time t equal to, okay? Uh, and so you can uh, uh, essentially summarize uh, this uh, two-stage game into a single-stage game, because you know that uh, if you play R, then uh, at the second stage, uh, we will play uh, U. Okay, which is the best thing. And so we will get uh, four plus three, which is equal to seven, okay? If instead you play anything else uh, at the first stage, if you play, uh, say, uh, L or U, then uh, the opponent will play L at the second stage, and it will be better for you to play L, okay? So essentially, uh, the payoff, uh, if you don't play R at the first stage, uh, is what you would get uh, by adding one to your payoff uh, at uh, t equal one. So you end up with this game. And now, if you look at this game, you find that there is a new Nash equilibrium, which is essentially 7-7. Seven, seven. So essentially, playing strategy C against strategy C is a Nash equilibrium. And it is a Nash equilibrium that allows you to get a higher payoff than what you would get uh, uh, otherwise, okay? By just playing uh, the single stage Nash equilibrium, okay? So, the, uh, so this idea of uh, uh, credible threats uh, is essentially um, uh, what uh, uh, also <clears throat> allows you to um, find uh, uh, similar Nash equilibria for uh, uh, infinitely repeated uh, games. But let me ask first uh, if there are questions on this. So is there, uh, there are a few questions if we get the chat. Okay, so no. So is everything clear? Okay, looks like uh, that uh, everything is clear. I don't see any question. Okay, very good. So uh, let's go ahead. So. <clears throat> Now, uh, let us consider again uh, this uh, um, prisoner's dilemma. But now we are going to play it uh, uh, an infinite number of times. Um, and essentially, as I told you, so the payoff is going to be the sum of all the payoffs, uh, and the strategy is going to be, say, a, a sequence uh, of uh, a plan of actions, okay? Now, uh, consider this uh, uh, trigger strategy here. Okay, so this trigger strategy uh, is like a contract. You should think about it as a contract. It says, uh, I'm going to play R at the first, uh, the first time at t equal one. And I'm going to play R uh, at time t. If you have been playing R, at all previous times. But if you, do, if you deviate from this, if you don't play R at all previous times, I, uh, I will play L forever, okay? So it's essentially telling you, 
you, I mean, I'm going to play, I am going to be nice to play R as long as uh, you play R. But as soon as uh, you deviate, I will play L and continue playing L forever. Okay? So the idea is again uh, uh, the one of uh, uh, like, a, uh, a, a, say, a threat. Uh, which is uh, triggered by the deviation of the other player. And, uh, and this uh, deviation of the other player triggers uh, a punishment. A punishment is uh, playing uh, L uh, forever, okay? Now you can think about uh, computing what is the utility function of uh, agent uh, or player one if we place this uh, trigger strategy against uh, a trigger strategy, okay? So if uh, both players uh, play a trigger strategy, it means that they will always uh, uh, play R, okay? Because no one deviates, uh, so they will continue playing R. Excuse me, Professor. Yeah. Uh, is trigger strategy common knowledge? The strategy, yes. okay, thank you. Yes, so the, the, the idea is uh, that uh, you can think uh, that uh, these two players will uh, talk to each other and uh, or say player one will tell uh, the player two, look, uh, I'm going to play this trigger strategy. And then uh, the issue for player two is to um, is to understand whether uh, what uh, player one says is credible or not, okay? And it is credible if uh, uh, the strategy, if the plan uh, that is uh, in this strategy is, uh, uh, com is compatible with the incentives of uh, player one, okay? Does not go against uh, his own interest. And here you can see that it does not, because essentially the punishment uh, correspond to um, uh, going back uh, to a Nash equilibrium. And a Nash equilibrium is an equilibrium, okay? So, but you can think uh, that, uh, so these uh, uh, strategies are, uh, uh, so the players discuss before playing this game uh, about how to play it. And one of the two players say, I'm going to play this trigger strategy. And the other player uh, decides uh, uh, whether he should, uh, how he should best respond, okay? Now, so if you, if you compute the uh, payoff of uh, player one, uh, if he plays the trigger strategy against the trigger strategy, then uh, you find that uh, um, uh, he gets a payoff of uh, four divided by one minus delta, no? because especially he would get a payoff of four at any time, okay? Now let's think about what is the payoff of player one if uh, he plays R for uh, uh, T time steps, uh, but then uh, uh, he plays L at time T plus one. And then, uh, uh, well, uh, if he plays against the trigger strategy, then uh, he knows that uh, uh, player two is going to play L forever. So then uh, his best response would also be to play L forever, okay? Then in this case, uh, his payoff is uh, uh, four for the first uh, T periods. Then uh, at time t, he will get uh, a payoff of five because uh, he plays L and uh, player two plays R. And then uh, after that, uh, we get a payoff of one because they're going to play this Nash uh, equilibrium. Now, if you do the calculation, then uh, what you find is that uh, the, uh, the payoff of this strategy is equal to the payoff of, uh, 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 of playing a trigger strategy, again, a trigger strategy, plus delta to the t times one minus four delta divided by one minus delta. 
So this means that if delta is larger than one fourth, then uh, the, uh, the payoff of this uh, uh, deviating from a trigger strategy at any time is going to give you a payoff which is smaller than the one of the trigger strategy. Okay. So essentially, uh, playing a trigger strategy against a trigger strategy is a Nash equilibrium, or a trigger strategy is the best response to a trigger strategy. Okay, so um, okay, so you see the uh, uh, so the remarkable thing uh, here, which is essentially that uh, uh, because of this uh, um, uh, threat. Uh, out of this uh, trigger strategy, you are going to achieve when you repeat this game uh, uh, many times, uh, you are going to be able to achieve a payoff, uh, which is uh, four four, which is not a Nash equilibrium of the single state game. Okay, so and, and this is uh, uh, one of uh, uh, one of the important insight of uh, say repeated games uh, um, that essentially when uh, uh, you repeat uh, uh, the same game, the outcome can be very very different uh, from the outcomes uh, from the outcome of the uh, single uh, stage game. Okay. And uh, also the other thing which is important that, uh, so you see that uh, uh, this uh, trigger study is the best response if uh, this delta is uh, large enough, okay? Now, if you interpret this delta as the probability that the game uh, will continue, so this tells you that uh, you expect uh, this type of uh, cooperation, so this type of uh, uh, agreements, uh, between agents to be possible when, uh, uh, say, uh, in situations uh, where uh, uh, which are stable, and say, say when uh, you expect uh, to interact uh, with other people with the same people many times. Okay. If you instead uh, be in a very volatile environment uh, where essentially uh, you are not sure you will uh, uh, survive tomorrow, or, uh, or which essentially corresponds to a delta which is very small, then essentially uh, it is not possible to achieve uh, uh, this uh, cooperation, okay? or, or say this agreement uh, cannot, uh, uh, cannot work. Okay? And you are back to the outcome of uh, the single uh, stage game. So are there questions on this? Uh, do players play the study at a certain time simultaneously? So essentially, yeah, so, the, um, so the idea here is that uh, uh, players uh, 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 decide their strategies before starting the game. And uh, and then uh, when they play the game, they just unfold their strategy. And uh, so in this case, for example, this uh, discussion here between the two players, of course, uh, before they start playing, okay? And then uh, uh, also player one can do this calculation before uh, uh, starting the game and figure out that uh, actually playing a trigger strategy against the trigger strategy is the best uh, uh, is the best that we can do and uh, and then uh, after that uh, essentially they uh, they play this game uh, just as uh, uh, mandated by their uh, strategy how can we think of trigger study in the Nash equilibrium? Uh, is it trial and No, 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 no. Uh, in what sense trial and error? Um, Dennis, I don't understand your question. Um, 
No, because here you already the strategy is already given. So if we have a new game, how can we think of a trigger strategy that is also a Nash equilibrium? Okay, so this is uh, in a situation where uh, it's a very idealized situation where the game is not uh, going to change. And it's common knowledge that these two players uh, will play this game uh, over and over again. Okay. Now, if the game changes at a certain time, then uh, uh, this is not uh, discussed uh, by this. Uh, um, by this uh, in this setting, okay. But uh, uh, maybe you have seen uh, this. Uh, I mean, what is important here is essentially this uh, recognition that uh, strategic interaction, if it is limited uh, to a short term, then uh, it can have very different outcomes. Uh, then uh, if it is uh, if it extends uh, over a long uh, a long term and uh, there is a there is a video of a TED talk uh, we can put on the website to say what are the implications of this uh, for uh, the uh, geopolitics and I think it's uh, it's interesting so Colin uh, uh, says that uh, it is very confusing. It doesn't understand what is delta. Okay, so delta is uh, 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 is called the discount factor. Okay, so delta is uh, is is the way in which uh, future uh, payoffs are uh, weighted with respect uh, to present payoffs. Okay. So if you look at this formula, you, you see that uh, the, um, tomorrow's payoff, uh, $1 tomorrow, is worth delta dollars today, OK? And, um, and you can interpret this either because uh, as an interest rate, OK? Because uh, if you have $1 tomorrow, uh, that uh, is equivalent to less than one dollar today, or you can interpret in terms of probability that uh, essentially you have uh, uh, tomorrow. I mean, there is a probability delta that player one dies, okay, and then uh, one dollar tomorrow is worth in expected term is worth uh, delta dollars today. Okay, because delta is the probability that you will still be alive. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. So, but see, what I'm doing here is a very short, uh, 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 say, summary of very broad field. So, uh, it's mostly uh, meant to be. Uh, like an enticement for you to delve deeper into this subject. What if player one plays R and player two uh, reach the standard and plays L? Then uh, together both play L and at the end of the game, player two will have better results. So, uh, shouldn't this be a winning strategy for player two? So, um, um, So, uh, so yes. So you, so you are saying, uh, okay. So if uh, uh, they play this trigger strategy, say player two plays this trigger strategy, and player one uh, uh, at a certain point uh, defects, okay, and you are right that this payoff will be larger than the payoff that player two will get. Uh, against uh, this, uh, uh, this strategy here. But this is not the important thing. I mean, it's, it's not uh, uh, whether player one gets more than player two doesn't really matter. What it matters is uh, uh, what player one gets if he plays one strategy 
against what he gets if he plays another strategy. Okay. And here, the, so the comparison is between player one when he plays the trigger strategy and player one when he plays a different strategy. Okay. Okay, so uh, now the other interesting uh, uh, observation is that uh, you can think of other trigger strategy. Think, uh, for example, to these other trigger strategy, it says, uh, player one turns to player two. Look, I'm going to play R at odd times, and I'm going to uh, play L at even times. And, uh, and these, uh, as long as you play R. And if you stop playing R, R I will play L uh, uh, forever, okay? From that, that time onward, okay? And you can do exactly the same calculation and you can find out that uh, if uh, uh, this, um, uh, the delta, the discount factor is uh, sufficiently close to one, then uh, this is a Nash equilibrium. So this is a Nash equilibrium in the sense that uh, player two uh, playing, uh, uh, so if player two plays the trigger strategy, then player one should play R. Or it should, should always play R because otherwise, if he deviates, uh, he will get a lower payoff. Okay. So, this is a kind of uh, exploitation, no? Because uh, uh, if you go back uh, to this payoff table, player one is saying, uh, I'm going to play R. Uh, you have to play R all the time. And uh, I'm going to play R half of the time. And L. Uh, half of the time. So half of the time you are going to get zero and I'm going to get four. And, uh, and, and but uh, that's, that's the deal, okay? And uh, what you can find is that uh, if you do the same uh, uh, calculation as, uh, as here, you can find that uh, this is actually a Nash equilibrium. So if uh, player one plays this trigger strategy to two, the player two should always uh, open, okay? And so uh, and you can find that uh, actually uh, there are many other trigger strategies uh, that you can think of. You can think, uh, well, I'll uh, play R once every five rounds and uh, otherwise I will play L and you always have to play R. Okay, so this again uh, uh, is a trigger strategy that if delta is large enough, huh, is close to one, then uh, uh, it is a Nash equilibrium. Okay, and this is the content of uh, this theorem, which is called the uh, uh, Folk's theorem, and uh, which says essentially the following thing. Huh? that uh, uh, if you take uh, uh, this uh, payoff table for the prisoner's dilemma in this case, and you put uh, essentially here the payoff of player one and the payoff of player two, then these four points, then you have four points in this graph. So the point one, one, which is the Nash equilibrium, the point uh, uh, zero, five, which is this one, the point uh, uh, five, zero, and the point four, four, okay? And then uh, you can draw this uh, polygon and, uh, and you can take uh, this, uh, from this dash equilibrium, you can draw this, uh, uh, this, this line and, and uh, essentially identify this uh, shaded region, region uh, gamma. So the fourth theorem tells you essentially that uh, for any point uh, in this uh, shaded region, you can find a trigger strategy such that uh, you can achieve uh, uh, these expected payoff, uh, an expected payoff that are exactly coincide uh, with these points here. Okay, and this uh, uh, trigger strategy will be a Nash equilibrium um, if delta is sufficiently close to one. Okay, 
So now you see that, uh, well, this was the, uh, uh, the Nash equilibrium that we derived with uh, simple trigger strategy. And uh, so if you see all the points uh, to this side, then corresponds to points where essentially player one uh, exploits uh, uh, player two. Exploitation is possible because uh, there is always uh, the threat uh, to uh, play the Nash equilibrium, which would give uh, a, a lower payoff uh, to both uh, the, the players. Okay. So essentially, uh, this is called the uh, 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 Folk's theorem, and tells you that essentially repeated games uh, are uh, really, really uh, complicated because uh, the space of strategy is really huge. It's, uh, uh, it is, it's very, very large. And, uh, and, and so in this uh, spatial of strategies, the number of Nash equilibria become, uh, uh, say, uh, a, a dense set. I mean, uh, so you, you have uh, uh, an infinite number of possible uh, uh, Nash equilibria. Okay. And it's called the uh, Fox theorem because uh, essentially, uh, well, it has been. Uh, proven uh, by Friedman in 71, but uh, it was uh, essentially known uh, uh, to be true by game theorists uh, well before uh, 71. So uh, many people uh, uh, understood that this was the case. Okay, so... Um, uh, excuse me, Professor. Please. Uh, yes, exactly. For this, uh, for this graph, how do you find the light green uh, lines that you've traced? Are they parallel to the axes? Are they, um... yeah, they are parallel to the axes? Yes. Ah, okay. Thank you. Perfect. So these are these are uh, the this gamma is a set of uh, points uh, in this polygon where uh, the payoffs. Uh, of uh, both players are at least as large as those of the Nash equilibrium, of the Nash equilibrium, of this Nash equilibrium here. Okay. 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 Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, very good. Other questions? Okay, so if not, so let me finish by uh, mentioning what happens. So, so this is the case of uh, um, uh, repeated games uh, where uh, agents uh, have complete information about the game. They know whom they are playing with, they know what are the rules, et cetera, et cetera. So imagine that uh, uh, instead uh, you have a situation where you don't know exactly the payoffs, or you don't know exactly uh, who are you pay, uh, playing with, okay? So this is the subject of uh, repeated games of incomplete information. And uh, this is a really uh, a fascinating subject. And um, so let me give you an example. So imagine that uh, there is a game between two people and uh, every day they have a cake and uh, this cake has a cherry in the middle and uh, player one has to split this cake into two and player two has to choose which side uh, to pick so player uh, one uh, does not know how much uh, player two likes the cherry so, but he may imagine that player two likes the cherry. So what he uh, may want to do is to uh, cut the cake uh, in such a way that the part uh, which has the cake, the, the cherry is a little bit smaller, okay? And essentially uh, with the idea that essentially when uh, uh, say the part of the cake uh, 
which contains the cherry is small enough uh, that uh, layer two is indifferent uh, between uh, having a larger part of the cake or having the cake, the part with the cherry. Then uh, uh, even, uh, even, uh, um, then uh, uh, he, so he can make uh, the part with the cherry uh, this model. Okay. Now, however, they are playing this game every time, and the game and the issue is uh, whether the player two. So if player two picks uh, the smaller part of the cake uh, with the cherry. So he's revealing information to player one of how much he likes the, the cherry. And what is the consequence of this? The consequence of this is that tomorrow, the part of the, uh, the, part of the cake with the cherry will be smaller. Do you get the point? And so the more, say, player two reveals uh, information on his true preferences, the more player one can exploit this uh, to uh, get a better payoff, okay? And, uh, and so this is essentially uh, the type of situations uh, that uh, um, repeated games of incomplete information uh, deal with. It's a theory that has been uh, developed by game theorists uh, in the Cold War, uh, because essentially uh, there was exactly this type of situation. So the, the US and the Soviet Union were uh, essentially discussing about uh, treaties on uh, nuclear armament, but each of them didn't know exactly how many, what was the arsenal of the other side. And of course, uh, uh, when you write a treaty, you also reveal information that you don't like to reveal. Okay, so uh, there was a group of game theorists uh, that were engaged by the US government uh, to study what is the uh, optimal way to play this game. Okay, and uh, there is a very, very nice. Uh, one of these guys uh, was uh, Robert Oman. And uh, if you go on the website, uh, there is a, um, there's a lecture of Robert Oman that uh, explains uh, uh, one, uh, uh, say, a little part of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, um, field of game theory, of uh, repeated games of incomplete information. And uh, it is really fascinating. I really recommend it uh, to all of you to, um, to have a look. So with this, uh, I think uh, I'm essentially done. If you have questions, I'm uh, happy to um, yes, I, So I would have a question. I would have two. So regarding um, the Fulks theorem, so you, you showed us the uh, shaded region and, uh, and okay, but so I thought, is there maybe some sort of a, um, let's say a line, maybe, maybe connecting uh, the Nash equilibrium with the uh, optimum uh, point, the four, four, or some sort of property um, of, of this region for which we could kind of agree that there is exploitation, but it's a sort of a friendly exploitation. I don't know if, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, yes, you can uh, interpret. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, so like you're not at the Nash equilibrium, which is uh, the, the, mo the safest possible uh, point outcome, but you're not really at the 4-4 a coordinate where uh, everyone is uh, maximally um, kind of yeah. earning, but maybe there's some line or some point there, some trajectory where um, we can kind of say, okay, well, we're mutually exploiting each other and kind of making a compromise. Uh, I'm just taking like stabs in the dark. I don't even know if that this makes sense. Um, 
Yeah, so, so my, uh, I mean, my discussion of exploitation was, uh, say, uh, very simple and naive, was essentially saying that uh, if you have a threat, I mean, if uh, someone tells you, um, I mean, in this uh, trigger strategy where you say, I'm going to cooperate uh, once every week with you, and otherwise I'm going to exploit you, uh, and you have to cooperate. So yeah. this looks like uh, essentially exploitation, right? Yeah. So, but, uh, but of course, uh, say psychologists and the game theorists, and uh, they have discussed all these issues in much more detail. So uh, this was just meant to give you a sense of uh, uh, the, say the, the interesting things that happen when you model uh, uh, strategic interaction in a repeated way. Okay. So other questions? So if not, uh, then uh, we take a break uh, and uh, We'll uh, reconvene uh, for the next uh, lecture.